Hey guys, how's it going? Brian Cusco here at Triple B. Now before I introduce our guest, I'm very excited to let you know that our Patreon account has officially gone live. So check out the link in the description to find out what's going on with that, okay? Dave Kaufman is one of the very first reptile YouTubers that I started watching when I found out that reptile YouTubers were even a thing. Now I can sit here and tell you all about Dave and how awesome and funny he is, but why don't we just let the man speak for himself? You're watching Triple B TV. channel man I watch your channel I'm not just saying that because I'm on your channel right now I know because you'll, 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 you'll send me a message like hey blah 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 that was cool and I was like dude he's actually watching my channel <laughs> I do I watch your <laughs> vlog and I watch your channel yeah I like it man how'd you get into keeping snakes well it's a story that I think is really mimicked by a lot of people that are into herpetoculture I caught a garter snake when I was nine years old on a camping trip and I got to keep that snake on the condition that it never got out and of course that one snake turned by the end of the summer turned into five snakes and three salamanders and a couple of skinks that I found and um, my very first book I begged my mom to buy me was the Peterson's Field Guide and then I grew up in Minnesota so I, I went to the back of the book and looked at all the you know the range maps and figured out every single reptile that was in Minnesota and I wanted to catch every single one of them. Well, when you're nine and 10 years old, you're limited to really your front yard and down the street where all we had was garter snakes. But over time, and it took me years, I did finally eventually find every species of reptile and amphibian native to Minnesota, so. That's impressive. Yep, and so from there, it just exploded in 92. I found my first bull snake on a camping trip, and that is what really started my obsession with snakes, so. So Herpers TV, that's the first time I ever saw you was on the internet yeah, yeah, watching Herbers yeah. TV and I was like, this guy has like, it's like actually documentary quality videos. And I was yeah. like, that's awesome. He's like, I'm yeah. a Herper and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the song that Avery, you either love that song or you hate that song. <laughs> I think I've always been on the fence on it. Like, do I love it? Do I hate it? I don't right, matter. Right, it's right. there. It, it got me and it's part right. of it. And then, I mean, just, just the, it was full documentary style, right? I mean, that's, it was. That's it, the style you go for, right? Right. So uh, later on in life, I went to UCLA film school, moved out to LA, did the film thing for a while, moved back to Minnesota. And ironically, my film career exploded once I left LA, which is the exact opposite of how a lot of people do it. But I made a film called 13 Hours in a Warehouse. It was a horror film. It was released through Lionsgate, literally all over the world. It was one of the first Minnesota made horror films to be released in China. Um, and the reality of filmmaking is that I own the Chinese version of my own movie <laughs> that I bought off of eBay. <laughs> the European version of my own movie I bought off of eBay. So after I was done with that movie, I wanted to move into documentary filmmaking because as a creative outlet, documentary filmmaking is much more forgiving and it's much more raw and it's much more seat of your pants. To me, that's filmmaking, you know, going and following a script and, you know, trying to get it as, as close to the script as possible is very mechanical and it's not the style of filmmaking that I loved. Going out with a camera and just grabbing whatever you film, that entire project comes together in the editing room, that's what I love, that creative process. And as soon as I was finished with the horror movie, I was looking for a subject to do a documentary on, and I was thinking, okay, do we want to do it on some social thing? Do we want to do it on some cultural thing? And then I stopped and I thought, well, the answers are right in front of your face. Do a documentary on the millions of people out there that love reptiles and keep reptiles and the celebrities that keep reptiles and you know everything there is to know about herpetoculture that the general public just will never be exposed to and the first film did so well that herpers 2 came out a couple of years later and then everybody said you know do a documentary on field herping so herpers 3 came out after that and then i started traveling the world and interviewing other people australia and canada and by that time you know, people had stopped buying DVDs. It was all streaming and that was the future. And so I had all this footage and I didn't know what to do with it. I wasn't gonna go raise another $50,000 to go make another DVD, knowing full well that I probably would not recoup that money just, you know, selling DVDs. Plus raising that kind of money for a film is really hard. I and, imagine. 
<laughs> yeah, something I wasn't interested in doing again, so I took those episodes and I created Herper's TV on YouTube. And at the time, I knew nothing about YouTube. I thought, okay, so you put a video on YouTube and then you get a million subscribers and then, you know, people watch it and click the advertisement and you get a lot of money. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm, look, 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 did you see my shoes? I'm saying, yeah, that's right. That's mine are in the same boat, yeah. And so, you know, and it's funny because the more, the more popular you get on YouTube, the more people think you're rich. And the more, you know, and, and with me making four feature films, five feature films actually, I've got another documentary coming out that's not reptile related. It's about stand-up comedians with Louis Anderson. But, you know, people think that we're rich. And we are so not. <laughs> so Financially, absolutely not. Although, on the other end, I think, I mean, just getting to meet you, I mean, it's somebody, uh, you see somebody from afar, you watch, for me, it's been a thing where I see, like, there's this guy, and he, he's awesome, and I would love to meet this guy someday. You're talking about me? I'm talking about you. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, who are you talking about? That's and in that sense, I feel very rich to th this outlet of YouTube that can bring a, these type of people together. Absolutely, and... There are two kinds of rich. There's monetary rich, which can be shallow and empty. I never want to live my life trying to chase that next dollar. That's not living. But rich in experience and rich in, you know, sharing what our life story is and sharing what our experiences are with other people, that's what makes us rich. So, yeah, in that respect, I'm very rich. And, but I'm not monetarily rich, so I can't go over and pay that guy 20 bucks to not trim his lawn right now. <laughs> Dude, that's, that, on point, man. <laughs> See, there's, there's this guy trimming over here. We're trying to do yeah. an interview outside, and it's like, what are we gonna do about it? So anyway, that's kind of where Herpers TV came from, and I never liked the name Herpers, because it's one letter away from another word in the English language that and my God, I have the filters on my YouTube channel to, because everybody, oh, I thought this said herpes. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, did you come up with that all by yourself or did your mom help you with that one? <laughs> but you know, I got so sick and tired of, this is herpes TV. <laughs> so then I changed it to the reptile channel, which now I'm gonna have to change again because there's another channel out there called the reptile channel and it's about reptiles, but it's not about reptiles. It's actually a sex fetish video of people that get off on animals ripping apart other animals and devouring them. Wow. And so we are now, there's, there's this whole thing in the reptile community to boycott the reptile channel. And I don't know if that's adversely affecting my channel or not, but you know, the documentary style of, of, of filmmaking or making videos is awesome. But as a creative, you know, I always want to innovate and I always want to take my art to the next level. And I always want to keep growing as, as an artist and as a video maker and as a filmmaker. And so, uh, again, we're gonna rebrand. We just rebranded the Reptile Channel. Now we have to rebrand again to get as far away from this other channel as, as we possibly can. I, in, in, in doing that, you know, I love my vlog channel and I love vlogging. It's much more personable and the, you know, the style of, of, of videos that I make for the Reptile Channel is basically me sitting in a chair saying, okay, well, in this episode we went here and we saw this and, and let's go see what, you know, and then put the camera on my subject and do straight up documentary style, which is great, but I kind of feel like I've taken that style as far as I can go and now I want to integrate vlogging with the documentary style. I'm saying it here on this channel first, but this coming spring, at the beginning of our new season, I'm going to s kind of splice vlogging and the documentary style together. And then the Reptile channel will probably be rebranded to simply Dave Kaufman's Reptile Adventures. And then the vlog channel that I have is going to still be there, but I don't think I'm going to do as much reptile-related vlogging on that channel. I'm gonna do much more reptile related vlogging on Dave Kaufman's Reptile Just kind Adventures. Of a combination of the two. The, right, the... And, and splice all the, 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 the styles of, of video making together into that one channel. And I hope people really like that, so. I think people, I mean, I'll like it. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> I talked to a lot of people at Tinley this weekend about it and every single person that I talked to at Tinley said, oh my God, yeah, I'd do that. So I think I'm on the right track here, but it's been, it's been this you know, for, for as long as I've done this channel because I'm constantly thinking and I'm constantly reinventing myself and, 
and, and reinventing the channel. So, so. You, you, you're all over the place. I mean, you go all over the world doing I am stuff. Like wing what, wing. Yeah, and that's, yeah. I, I would love to do that someday, and I yeah. hope I could join it. Where's where yeah. your next adventure? <sighs> you know, uh, uh, before I answer that, I will just say that anybody, anybody can do what I do. I wasn't given anything. I, 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 I don't have a trust fund. I grew up actually very poor, and in doing that, I really never saw money as something that you absolutely need to have to be happy. And as a matter of fact, I saw the opposite, but anybody can do what I do. You just have to do it. You have to have that drive. You have to have that passion and just do it. And so as my channel began to grow, the subject matter and, and how I portrayed this industry in my channel, reptile related companies came to me and asked me to, if they could sponsor me. And at the time that Zilla came to me and said, hey, can we sponsor your channel? I had no idea what they were asking me and I turned them down. <laughs> and, and they came at me three times and said, what if we sponsor you? Nah, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna do with the channel. Da, 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 da. And finally he puts his hands on my shoulder and goes, what if I sponsor you? <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, all right. That's how that kind of came about. So, you know, it was just a matter of, you know, following your passion and putting your passion in the videos and this type of thing will come. And it has enabled me to travel the world. And so, you know, I did Peru and I did Australia again, Israel and in Thailand and, and all over the place. And I am living my dream job. I get paid to travel the world and find really cool reptiles. And again, not enough to go tell that guy to stop <laughs> trimming stop, the hedges. Stop with the trimming. The trimming is going to continue yeah, until... I feel like Quasimodo. Stop with the trimming. <laughs> uh, next adventure. We are planning a ton of stuff. This spring, we are going back to Australia and then out to New Caledonia. That's where the crested geckos come from. That's where the lychees come from. That's where terror skinks come from. If you haven't heard of terror skinks, go look them up. They're a combination between a monitor lizard and a skink. They're amazing. And they're found on New Caledonia. So we're gonna go spend about 10 days on New Caledonia and just island hopping around, around that country and uh, just finding all these cool herps that really, it's, it's really weird because there's herps there that no one's ever heard of. And then there's herps that everybody's heard of the crusties and the leeches and that sort of thing so that's going to be an adventure that we're going to do this year we're talking about komodo hopefully we can make that happen together i've never been to europe the, the way that they have bioactive terrariums and the way they, they don't use rack systems they have terrariums and they have displays in their house and i really want to see that and document that because it is so different from what they're doing in Australia or doing in Canada or doing here in the US. So eventually I think that I'm gonna plan a trip to Europe around the Houghton Show. I'd love to do ham, but they don't allow cameras there. So really? we, yeah, yeah. So oh, that's why I've never seen a video of that's ham. That's exactly okay. right, that's exactly okay. right. So ham would be the show that I would love to do, but I just don't think that I'm gonna get permission to film there. So I'm gonna do the Houghton Show in the Netherlands and then go around and film some of the, uh, uh, the herpers I mean, that are in I hope the Europe. Komodo thing works out for So it, do I, it, man. It, we it, gotta make that work. Yeah, and if that can work out, I would also love to, love, I'd love to go over to, I love the Netherlands. I, yeah. I love the Netherlands. Well, there. you know, you are more than welcome to come on every single adventure that I go on. You know, that'd be great, because traveling alone has its awesomeness. That's a word, awesomeness. Oh uh, yeah, I use it all the time. Right, awesomeness. Because you get to go where you want, you get to see what you want, you don't have to be part of a crowd that, you know, you have to then go see what they want and it might not be what you want and da 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 But when you're going with fellow reptile YouTubers, where the group goes is exactly where you want to go. So yeah, I mean, let's make all this happen, man. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. There you go. That's Dave in a nutshell, diddly. If you want to find out more about all the awesome stuff that Dave has done and is doing, please find links down in the description for both of his channels. I'm really hoping that we can go on some adventures with them soon. We're definitely going to at some point, but how soon is to be determined. If you want to find out how you can get involved in that, make sure to click on that Patreon link in the description as well, okay? Our next episode, we're going to be visiting my buddy Matt Bernardin at SoCal Herps and checking out some of his cool croc skinks and hognose snakes. Until then, you've been watching Triple B TV. Stick around for the bloopers. Y'all take care. Let's clear off the, uh, yeah. let's have our, our, our lovely walnut here, who is, this walnut is part of 
life and existence. If you want to find out more about all this blinking numbers, stinking, thinking, thinking, inking, blinking, minking, minking, hinking, custom copy, wipe your face off what you see all around is just me. You lovely people watching this lovely episode of life. All the awesome stuff that. Uh, hang on, hang on. Let me just. Yeah, just yeah, think, think. I'm gonna. Ah, uh, check it one, two, check it. It's weird. Now that I know that I'm doing bloopers every time, is it? Am I like bloopering on purpose? Mm, I'd like to think not. <clears throat> We good? I'm dirty. Am I too dirty? If you want to find out more about all the awesome stuff that Dave has done. All right, here we go. All right.